What's up everyone? It's registered dietitian Kara Corey here and for today's dietitian talk topic I want to talk to you guys about an up-and-coming artificial sweetener known as allulose. Um, there's also another name for allulose, D. Picos, Picos, I'll put that, I'll have Jason put that on the screen for you because I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but this is a newer artificial sweetener that I've only recently noticed in the Quest products. So I've seen it in the Quest Hero bars and I believe Quest also utilizes it in their cereal bars. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later, but I know a bunch of people had reached out and asked me to discuss allulose and what I knew about it. So I had to do a little research on it myself, being uh, that it's so new. Um, I was not something I was that familiar with until I saw the Quest products. Allulose is a monosaccharide and it's very similar to sucralose um, in terms of taste, in terms of texture, in terms of performance. And it does have the same chemical structure, basically that of fructose or even glucose. Um, however, the difference is there, there are some chemical structural differences there with the hydrogen and the oxygens, so that when your body actually um, absorbs it, it doesn't actually metabolize it. So your body isn't able to take the allulose and turn it into glucose into your body. It's not able to metabolize it in that manner. Therefore, your body is not utilizing any calories from this product which makes it a great product for um, diabetics, for weight control, um, and things of that nature. So you've got to expect in today's day and age with diabetes on the rise, there's about 30 million people that are currently diagnosed with diabetes, and diabetes is very commonly undiagnosed, or should I say doesn't go diagnosed for a long time. People can go a long time without actually getting diagnosed. So there's about 85 million people in that pre-diabetic state. And this is in the United States. So we are obviously in a situation where, you know, people are capitalizing on coming up with new and different ways to help assist in either prevention of diabetes or managing it. So it's a huge market. With that being said, it is recognized and approved. I did look it up. If you guys have watched some of my other videos on artificial sweeteners, I've spoken about GRAS before, or G-A-R-S, meaning generally recognized as safe. So generally recognized as safe is something that the FDA um, kind of gives their seal of approval on for things that aren't necessarily regulated, which tend to be things like artificial sweeteners. So um, the FDA has given their GRAS approval on allulose, and actually you can pull these up right online, which I have in front of me, and what I wanted to read to you was it was that it says, um, manufacturers of allulose submitted scientific evidence of safety, including public, publicly available research with the notification for FDA's review. And this occurred back in 2012. So this is still very, very new on the market. Um, in response, a GARS notification um, came out and the FDA stated it had no questions regarding the conclusion of expert panels that allulose is generally recognized as safe and usable as a purpose sweetener in foods and beverages where sugar or fructose would normally be used. Okay, so those are G those GRAS notices you guys can look up right online and it gives you a little bit more of a breakdown. Um, it looks like both of the submitters to the FDA, one was from Japan and one was from China, and interestingly enough, when I searched um, for some research-based evidence on allulose, there wasn't a lot out on it, which makes sense being fairly new. Um, the one study I did find I think was from Japan and they had done a study looking at allulose in terms of more weight management and um, glucose management. So um, a little bit of research out there, guys, but not a ton yet. We don't really know a lot of long-term effects from this this uh, from allulose. Um, allulose though is naturally derived and it was initially found in wheat, which I find interesting and it makes me wonder if there's any association or issue there for those that can't tolerate wheat if you have allulose. Um, so if anyone has any 
understanding of that, comment below. I'd be very interested to know if that's something that would have any overlap. Um, but it was initially identified in wheat, and then you can also, they've found naturally occurring small amounts in items like some of the sweeter fruits, like figs, jackfruit, and even in maple syrup. So this is one of those naturally occurring substances that has been uh, modified a bit. Similarly to other artificial sweeteners, allulose does have that no calorie benefit while maintaining that intensity of sweetness that most of us enjoy and desire. So is it too good to be true? Um, the one thing that I will say is that our bodies don't have the gut enzymes to be able to break down some of these products, allulose being one of them. So depending on the amount that you consume of something like allulose, it can cause a great deal of GI distress. It can cause major bloating, it can cause diarrhea immediately if, if eaten in excess, um, pain and gas, all of those kinds of things that we truly tend to avoid. Um, and that's not to say this is the only non-nutritive sweetener that can have that as a side effect, but I did kind of want to talk to my personal experience with it um, with consuming the Quest Hero Bars, which in terms of these bars, um, Quest sent them to me, and I love the flavor. They taste like a candy bar. Um, their nutritionals are kind of similar to a candy bar, except they're higher in protein and lower in sugar than a candy bar. But what I did notice with consuming those, and it took me a bit to figure out, but I was able to pinpoint, and I'm not the only one that's had this issue, but with just eating one bar, which I feel like is not eating in excess, because allulose is actually listed, um, it's always good to look at the ingredient label to see where ingredients are listed. So your first ingredient listed is going to have the, it's gonna make up the bulk of that product, right? Versus the last ingredient listed, it's gonna be the smallest amount in that product. So that's one little tidbit for looking at your ingredient profile there. And allulose falls as the third ingredient on this. It's protein blend, soluble corn fiber, and then allulose, which um, I don't know. How do you know how much allulose they put in a product? I'm not sure. From what I read online with the FDA, um, you know, Quest says they won't go heavy handed with how much allulose they use. I don't really know what that means or, or what amounts. You never truly know what amount of that ingredient is in something. But I noticed that with just eating one bar, I have so much GI distress. And I've test, I tested it on multiple occasions because I really, really enjoy the flavor, the texture of those bars. I love them. So I almost didn't want to believe I had an issue with them. Those of you that know me and have followed me a while, I've consumed artificial sweeteners throughout most of my diet. I've never been someone that's noticed GI issues with it or upset um, or any kind of bloating really, unless I was like super lean in the depths of prep. But this bar, it does something to me that I've never experienced before. It's not good, I can't handle it. And it's unfortunate because it, it means I will not be purchasing those bars because that's how bothersome it is for me. Um, I will say it's very individualized based on your gut and your gut health um, in terms of how well you're gonna respond to these types of items. So it's really, I'm really just doing this video to kind of make you aware of it, discuss what I know about it, and you know, everyone's different so you guys can find out how you respond to it. They also put the allulose in their cereal bars, which I've never noticed an issue with their cereal bars. So maybe it's not in as high of an amount in their cereal bars, or I'm not sure. All in all, would I recommend you seek out allulose? Well, at this point, it's not offered as like a, a table sugar, so you really can't buy it in um, you know, single serve packets like you can with Splenda or Truvia and things of that nature. You know, if you think back to Stevia, that took about 10 years or so before the FDA approved it and you saw more and more of it on the market. So I foresee we will eventually see allulose um, more and more in the market as, it become, as we become more aware of it and, you know, the FDA already did approve it and recognize it as safe. So, you know, my, my best advice to you guys is just to be a mindful consumer, be aware and take responsibility for the things that you're purchasing. Make sure you're aware of the ingredients that are in products that you're putting into your body. I think so quickly 
we like to assume it's, oh, it must be the gluten or it must be this. And we quickly omit entire food groups from our diet without really delving into the research of those, those minor ingredients that may be in the foods we're eating. So before you decide you need to give up whole food groups or go on a specific fad diet, you know, get yourself aware of those ingredients that you're consuming with the foods you're consuming, anything processed, um, you know, just be aware of what those ingredients are and try to pay more attention to how things may be impacting you. It takes a little bit of time. You can't just eat something once and know it causes you GI distress. You really have to do a period of eliminating it and then slowly adding it into your diet and see what happens um, one thing at a time. And that's kind of the best way to pinpoint what foods aggravate you in your GI system. So. That's going to be it in a nutshell on allulose. I would love to hear your feedback on it. Um, they are approved to use allulose in other products. You guys can look it up online what food products they are uh, able to use it in. But Quest is really the only one that I know of at this time. I'd love to hear your experiences with it below. Let me know if you've had the same pain and bloat that I've had with those Quest Hero Bars. And let me know what you guys would like to see in the future. Keep checking back for more.